Hello and welcome to the latest in my series of videos to help you make use of the Glam Workbench. In this video I'm going to be looking at the Trove Newspaper and Gazette Harvester. What does that do? Well, instead of just doing a search in the Trove web interface and going through a list of results, the Trove Newspaper Harvester enables you to download all of your results at once. That could be hundreds or thousands of newspaper articles. And what do you actually get? Well, you get the, the metadata, that's the descriptive information about the articles, what their title is, what newspaper they were published in, the date they were published, as well as some data that Trove generates, like the number of times they've been corrected by volunteers. You get all that metadata in a, in a CSV file, a comma separated values file, a spreadsheet. You also can get uh, all the OCR text of those articles in individual little text files so you can start to explore the content of the files. You can even get uh, images of the articles or PDFs of the articles in your download package as well. You might be wondering, well, okay, but why would I need to use the Trove Newspaper and Gazette Harvester? Well, there's a few reasons why you might want to use it. The first is that if you do do a search in the Trove web interface, you only ever see the first 2,000 results. That's as deep into the results set as Trove lets you go. However, using the Trove Newspaper and Gazette Harvester, you can get everything. However many results there are in your results set, you can download them all. So it enables you to push beyond that barrier to see what else is there. You can also, uh, another limitation of the web interface is that, you know, you only have limited control over the way search operates. Um, so, for example, things like punctuation, you can't uh, specify that you want to include or exclude punctuation when you're searching for it. Um, another example is the fact that uh, Trove by default searches not only in the content of the article, but it also searches in tags and comments. What if you want to exclude those from your search results? Well, what you can do with the Trove uh, Harvester is you can download all the articles and then you can write some little script or something to filter through those articles to get rid of the ones that you don't want. And another uh, reason why you might want to use the Trove Newspaper and Gazette Harvester is, well, if you looked at one of my earlier videos on using Query Pick, for example, something like this, where we actually zoom out of the full set of search results to see sort of patterns across time. And if you're doing that, if you're undertaking this sort of analysis, you might see something interesting and think, hmm, well, what's actually going on in this period, right? I want to I zoom in on this point to find out exactly what's happening. So having done that sort of big picture analysis using something like Query Pick, you can use the Trove Newspaper Harvester to get all the articles from that particular period so that you can do a, a deep dive into their content to find out what's going on. So I suppose, generally speaking, the main reason why you want to use the Trove Newspaper Harvester is that it enables you to do different types of analysis. You get all of the content of the articles and the metadata and you can use things like text analysis tools for to look for changes in language or for look, to look for particular combinations of words within the text. So it opens up these new possibilities for actually understanding what's going on within the newspaper articles. Okay, so what if we want to actually start a harvest? What do we do? Well, you need a couple of things to get started, and this is the same as Query Pick. You need a Trove API key, uh, and you need a search, of course. Um, so you can just go into the web interface in Trove and construct a search. In this case, I've, I've got a search for Tasmanian Tiger or Thylacine. Um, and we go into the Glam Workbench, and we go into Trove, into the Newspaper and Gazette Harvester. Now, sitting underneath uh, the notebooks in this section is a command line tool, which has been around in various forms for 10 years or so. Um, but, you know, it is a command line tool and a lot of people don't, aren't really comfortable using command line tools. So I've created some notebooks which actually sit on top of that command line tool and make it easier for you to just use it. Um, and there's actually two main versions. There's a, one which is just a web app uh, and there's one a notebook which actually sort of uh, walks you through how the command line tool works. And it gives you a few more options, but it's a, it's a bit more demanding in terms of uh, your knowledge uh, and uh, understanding how notebooks work and things like that. 
So today we're going to start with the easiest version, which is the web app. And so I'm just going to click on the link here, which says run live on Binder using Voila. And um, <coughs> again, if you've seen the, the query pick uh, video, you'll know that what's happening now is that uh, the details of the Trove newspaper harvester, the repository in which it lives, are being sent off to a service called Binder, which is using the configuration files in that repository to build a computing environment just for us, where we can run it in. And if you want to see what's going on, uh, we can just click on show there and it'll tell you that it's getting the details and preparing things. I'm just leaving this run in real time because I think it's important for you to know that you know it can take a little while for it to get going. But don't worry, as you can see things are happening uh, and eventually it will be with us. Um, so as I said, uh, you can uh, you just need a, a search in the Trove web interface to, to harvest and that can be anything. Um, you can use the different facets in Trove, whatever you like, uh, and just bring it across to the Trove newspaper harvester. Of course, you might want to keep in mind the size of your result set. Um, um, the newspaper harvester can harvest, you know, many thousands of results if that's what you want, but that will take a fair bit of time uh, and take up a bit of disk space as well. So you might want to, uh, you know, pay a bit of attention to the size of your result set to get, so that you're going to end up with something which is manageable and which is really focused on your interests. Okay, so it's just about ready now. Um, so. As I say, it just looks like a web app. It's actually a Jupyter notebook underneath, but it just looks like a web app. And all we need to do is uh, get our search URL. So we're just going to copy the URL from up here um, and go back and paste it in here. We're going to grab the Trove API key um, from here and paste it in as well. And that's all we need to get started. Now there are a few options. Uh, if we see here, we can choose to save the full text, save PDFs, or save articles as images. We're going to tick save full text. Um, saving the full text doesn't really um, affect the speed of the harvest, but if you choose the PDFs or the images, things do slow down considerably. So let's just go with the full text for now. We're going to click on start harvest and away it goes. You see there's 2650 articles in this set. Um, and it's not going to take very long, only a couple of minutes really, to do that amount of articles. Um, as I said, um, you know, you need to think about the size of the result set that you're getting. Um, and if you're doing, uh, or are doing sort of large harvests of newspaper articles, like many thousands of articles, as I said, it's totally possible with this tool. But you might want to think about um, the environment in which you're running. Uh, so we're using Binder at the moment, as which is you know the easiest way to start. Just click on a link. But if you're doing a research project where you're doing lots of harvests and downloading many thousands of articles, you probably need to think about setting something up which is a, a bit more permanent, uh, that you have a bit more control of. And there's a couple of options within the Glam Workbench for doing that. Um, you can create uh, a uh, an environment on a service called Reclaim Cloud. Um, which is a paid service, um, and you can also uh, create uh, an environment on the Nectar Research Cloud, which is uh, a part of our national research infrastructure. Um, both of these are pretty easy to set up, and I'll be creating some videos which actually walk through the setup process <coughs> at some stage in the future. But um, it's, uh, it's really just a matter of filling in a few boxes and clicking on a few buttons to set up that environment. And then you have a persistent environment in which you can run things like the Trove Newspaper Harvester, where your results are going to be saved. You don't have to worry uh, if you go away and leave your harvest that that binder is going to uh, time out through inactivity or something like that. Um, you just have everything set up for a large scale research. So binder is fabulous for something like this where we're just harvesting a few thousand results and we can just download them quickly. But for the next step in your research project, you might like to think about Reclaim or Nectar. Okay, it's zipping along here as we can see, um, and it will shortly be finished. Um, now what we're going to get as a result of this, as I said, it's going to be all, first of all, the results are going to be all packaged up as a zip file to make it easy for us to download it. 
um, and within that zip file we'll have uh, we'll have the metadata of the articles we'll have and we'll have the full text of all those articles <coughs> the metadata is uh, as I said stored in a, a comma separated values file a CSV file um, and you can open that with any uh, you know spreadsheet program okay we're now nearly there um, and once it's finished what's it going to do is going to zip up all of the things that it's downloaded um, so it's now creating a zip file and then it presents the link to the zip file so there it is and we can just click on that um, and we can choose to save that locally so that's now downloading okay I'm just going to close that for now but we will have a look okay so this is the uh, contents of one of the zip files um, you see we have a few files we have a metadata JSON file we have the results file uh, which is the CSV file and we have a text folder let's uh, have a little look at first of all I'll look at the uh, metadata.json file okay so what this is it's a, just a record of the harvest so it uh, records the search that you used um, the uh, parameters that you set that you wanted we harvested the text but we didn't harvest the the, uh, the PDFs uh, and it records the date uh, on which the harvest was started so with this information we could uh, repeat this harvest at some stage in the future uh, now let's have a look at the uh, metadata file uh, so here we have like I said it's just open in a spreadsheet program so we have the basic information about uh, the articles the um, uh, the title of the article the uh, newspaper it was published in uh, the the page number the date all that sort of stuff okay so we have all that just in a, a, a nice sort of spreadsheet format that you can explore or do some analysis of we also have uh, the full text as I said so for each article there is a separate little text file which contains the OCR content of that article um, so there they are there okay so we have all that data now what we could do with that we could just take all of those little text files and we could upload them to something like Voyant tools a text analysis program or or any text analysis program or notebook uh, and we could do some analysis of the language on the words used within those articles and you know cross cross reference them with the with the dates they were published with the newspapers they were published in even the states in which they were published in I'm just going to pop back to the query form see what we could do here too. a next step might be uh, to take that search that we had uh, and we could change it to ones that include photographs um, copy that URL again go back to the app paste that in okay and this time we're going to save the articles as images as well so I'm just going to start that now as I said this is going to be a lot slower than uh, getting just the text uh, because it has to download all the images individually um, so it's uh, so you only want to you, you want to be careful about you know how big your search is because it could take a lot of time and again consume large amounts of disk space but I'm just going to uh, let that chug along and I'm going to show you uh, an example of of the results of that sort of harvest so if I go here this is one where I've had the image parameter set to true um, and I've got a folder here which has got images of all of the newspaper articles there we go some nice photographs of thylacines in the newspaper okay um, so that is basically it in terms of using the Trove Newspaper Harvester as I said it is quite simple to get started and get going and they're the results that you can get from it um, in uh, I'll, I'll have another video shortly where I'll show the uh, other notebook that you can use to uh, harvest newspaper articles and what that enables you to do and also talk a bit more about what you do when you want a sort of larger harvest how you can set up your environment um, but uh, I hope you'll have a go with the Trove newspaper harvester um, and that it will you know really 
help you in sort of framing your research projects and thinking about how you can use newspaper articles in bulk, the sort of analysis you can do, the sorts of questions that you can ask of Trove's digitised newspapers. Okay, thanks. Bye.